my panelists to come on out um, so you can get a look at them while I'm talking. I think they're four of the most interesting and, and exciting people in Oakland, so I want to give you as much time with them as possible. Um, so once you guys have your mics on, come out and join me. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Marissa Raya. I am uh, the tech point person for the city of Oakland. I'm in the economic and workforce development department. Um, and as many of you know, Oakland has a very large and exciting startup community. And part of my job um, is to track them and support them. Last not least. Our startup community is multifaceted. Um, like Oakland's economy, it um, is rooted in a lot of different industries. We have enterprise software, we have civic tech, um, and we have companies on the innovative edge of some of our long-term yeah. industries like education and health and, of course, music. And our community is also very successful. Um, we're a mid-sized city, but Oakland is annually ranked fifth, sixth, or seventh in the nation in terms of venture capital being invested. Um, and I think my theory, for one reason that startups um, do so well in Oakland, is that if you're an independent thinker with um, a pretty big vision, you are not going to have a hard time finding a like-minded community of people, um, no matter what your field, in the city of Oakland. Um, and you're going to be able to find people that not only uh, believe in you and support you, but actually have the skills and talent and contacts to help put you on a sustainable growth path for your business. Um, so I'm excited to introduce the founders of four of Oakland's local accelerator programs working in uh, very diverse industries. On, um, starting all the way on my right, is Emily Kirsch, co-founder of SpunCube, the world's only incubator and accelerator dedicated to solar. Uh, next to me is, oh sorry, was that clapping that I should take a, a moment for? Please go right ahead, thank you. Um, next to me is Ronnie Croger of Optima Business Bootcamp, which I, I, we were thinking is probably the world's only um, co-op, member-owned accelerator for co-op businesses. Um, on my left is Jose Lopez, co-founder of Dev Labs, which has been spinning off talent in Oakland for 15 years. And um, Vanita Watson from Zoo Labs in West Oakland, which is a music and music tech accelerator. Um, so let's get started. And um, Vanita, I'll, I'll let you start <coughs> since sure. you've got such an interesting story. If you could all tell us a little bit about your accelerator and the advice you give for the startups and businesses you work with. Sure. Um, so we are a music accelerator. We invest in and explore the intersection of creativity, craft, and commercial viability. So we see music making teams as startups. And we call ourselves a blend between a tech accelerator and a traditional art residency. So we bring in these teams. Um, our program is two weeks. And we surround them with mentors from different industries, tech entrepreneurs, uh, industrial design, design thinkers, uh, financial analysts, lawyers. And we build with them their strategic vision. Uh, and then we give them space and time in the studio to create new work to support their project. Um, and one of, the, one of the advice that we give some of the teams that come through is to really look at scale appropriate strategies. Um, some of these teams have an idea of what their business should look like, and some of them are looking to really big pop stars or big ventures, um, and all of them have a story of where they started, but sometimes teams don't look at that the beginning. And so our biggest thing is what are your scale appropriate strategies for today? What is it for a year from now, and what does it look like five years from now? Great, thank you. Jose. So DevLabs is an uh, incubator, accelerator, and a micro VC fund that focuses on, 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 on revenue. Uh, one of the things that we, um, sorry. Um, and the way we do that is through our, uh, our focus on companies that are outside of the bubble. Um, so we don't usually accept uh, people that are from uh, local, uh, sorry, sorry, I don't know who I'm, can you come back to me? Yeah, yeah, we'll come back. 
It took a lot to persuade Dev Labs to come onto this panel. They're very under the radar in Oakland, but they do some of the most amazing work. Let's go to you. Jose, it's great that we're all kind of under the radar here in Oakland. So, Marissa, thank you for inviting yeah, yeah. us to be on this panel. Um, as Marissa mentioned, I'm Ronnie Croger. I'm co-founder of Optima Business Group Camp. We are the first ever member-owned business accelerator. We support entrepreneurs in, uh, in growing their business and launching, going to market, funding, scaling their businesses, and really encourage them to think holistically about the role of their business in the community and not just how to achieve financial returns. Uh, we do this through three programs. The first is our freelancer program, which is geared towards uh, entrepreneurs that want to be their own boss, solo entrepreneurs, independent workers that are looking to step out of their nine to five jobs. Uh, we also run a small business and enterprise program, which is broken up into four 12-week modules that support entrepreneurs through those uh, processes of launching, customer discovery, creating the foundation for the business to thrive, um, creating a business roadmap, uh, thirdly, funding their business, and fourthly, scaling and thriving. And earlier this year, we launched a partnership with Meridian University. They have a uh, integral MBA in creative enterprise, and we joined forces with the accelerator so that you can earn your MBA and start your business at the same time. Um, as Marissa mentioned, we're a cooperative. That means that the, the people going through our programs, uh, they get to uh, sh share in the community and share in the profits of the accelerator, as well as have a say in how the programs are, are run. Um, when Marissa asked me uh, uh, over the phone the other day, why a cooperative? Uh, well, when you think about entrepreneurship being at the heart of the American dream, and then you go back and think about the wealth gap that we're in. And you know, my story of entrepreneurship starts with economic sustainability. My parents are immigrants. They came to the United States. And uh, in 1977, and uh, my mom took on these jobs with some of the ladies in the neighborhood um, to clean houses and share in the profits of those jobs. So it's a history of cooperative entrepreneurship that um, why couldn't we do this on a bigger scale and start to close the wealth gap where we're all investing in each other's companies and creating a thriving <coughs> ecosystem. Thank you. Hi, as Marissa said, I'm Emily Kirsch, co-founder and CEO of Sfun Cube. We are the world's first and only incubator and accelerator dedicated to accelerating the success of solar entrepreneurs. And we do that by building the world's most vibrant ecosystem for solar startups right here in Oakland. Uh, we recently moved from Jack London Square to Uptown, so we're right around the corner, have 14,000 square feet of lead certified office space where we host 20 companies. There are 300 entrepreneurs that are employed by those 20 companies spread out around the country and around the world. Uh, they have contributed to the installation of more than 500 megawatts of solar, which is the equivalent of half of a nuclear power plant's worth of production. And we recently celebrated our first merger and our first acquisition. Uh, so SwanCube, our work is broken down into two pieces. First is our incubator. That's our collaborative co-working space where entrepreneurs that are focused on software and finance solutions to spreading solar adoption can be surrounded by other startups who they can collaborate with, contract with, um, and share that great space with. So that's the incubator. The accelerator is a nine-month program startups apply to. If they get in, we invest in them. We connect them to other capital partners, mostly angel investors as well as venture capital firms. We provide mentors, advisors, pro bono business services from law firms, management consultants, accountants, all the expensive things entrepreneurs think we can do on our own and then we mess it up because we don't do it right and have to fix it later. We provide all of that on the front end. Uh, and then we take a small equity stake in the company. Um, we've had two companies go through our pilot. We're hosting four in the accelerator now, and we're going to be doubling those numbers every year. So two success stories. One is Bright Current. When they started with us, they had 20 employees. They just hired their 100th. They're in five states now across the country. They provide retail sales for renewable energy solutions. So what that means is they partner with some of the biggest solar companies in the country, like Sunrun, Sungevity, SunPower, and they sell solar for them at retailers like Costco. So if you're buying groceries and somebody in a SunPower t-shirt says, hey, have you thought about going solar? And they tell you about the financing options and how it's more affordable than ever, it's probably a bright current employee. Another example is Utility API, who started out of one of our hackathons. We just uh, hosted, finished hosting one this weekend. 
and they automatically download utility bill history data. It sounds really exciting, uh, but it's this huge pain point in the solar industry that every potential solar customer in the residential market has to deliver their PG&E bills, their utility bills. Right now, that's a really arduous process that utility API solves for the entire industry. Um, so, so far, so good as far as entrepreneurs. It's been two years that we've been at it. We started with two companies, Mosaic, an investment platform that helps all of us invest in solar projects and make a return by doing so. Uh, and now we're at 20 and with uh, room to grow and scale. Thank you so much. So we are an incubator accelerator and a micro VC fund, and we do that through three ways. We focus on uh, teams that are building out their prototype and trying to get to their first sale. Uh, if they've already gotten to their first five, 10 sales, we, we help them um, scale their companies, and at that point, we're accelerating them. They stay with us between three to six months. Uh, and, if they're, and if they're doing well, then we actually do a, a convertible note investment, bridge financing, or, or sometimes cash flow financing in order to, to help them grow. So we have offices here in Oakland, uh, and we also have offices in southern Chile. Because of our investment thesis is that the next huge companies are not going to come out of the usual places. They're not going to come out of the Stanfords and the MITs. They're going to come out of these places that, uh, that generally haven't had access. Um, and so, it, in, in that way, uh, you know, our, ourselves, uh, we've been so, sort of around for two years. Like Marissa said, we're a little under the radar. We're really focused on building companies. We don't really do a lot of panels or, or VC talks or competitions. We're really focused um, because we're working with companies that are, are not coming from those pedigree universities or pedigree companies. We really, really push revenue. So our biggest advice is like, don't focus on your logo. Focus on your first 10 sales. Focus on your first 100 sales. Uh, a lot of people try to bootstrap. Bootstrapping is a, is a way that a lot of uh, a lot of the international folks we work with, um, there aren't too many exits in some of these countries yet. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing we push. Yeah. Thank you. That's excellent. Um, so I have some individual questions for you guys, but also taking um, questions from the audience. Um, if you want to hashtag them, um, I'm happy to field those as well. So Vanita, to come, if we can come back to you. Sure. Um, one of the really interesting things I think um, that I like hearing about from you is your work with the Institute for the Future and um, how, I guess, why you think musicians need an accelerator program and where you see the music industry right now. Yeah. So it is a little bit backwards. So when I started with my work with the Institute for the Future, I started concentrating on artists and my work kind of shifted to the future of work. And what I was seeing from signals on the horizon was that workers across the globe, you know, there was a 2013 Gallup study that said that 70% of our nation's workforce was unhappy. And about 80% of that, um, sorry, like 60% of those were non-engaged workers. And non-engaged workers cost businesses anywhere between 450 billion to 550 billion. Um, and so I started thinking about, well, where is the shift going? And the rise of freelancers is evident. People are kind of leaving nine to five jobs and kind of looking at uh, income generation portfolios and looking at breaking up their work and their work days and having these different projects that they work on. And some would say that these are entrepreneurial skills that they need to generate these projects and generate this revenue. And when we started looking at it, it was evident that artists have already been on this path for a very long time. So what we see at Zoo Labs is that artists are really <clears throat> signals to the future of work. They've been doing it for a long time. And so our job is really to understand how they're managing their portfolios and then sharing that work out to other people who kind of want to go down that similar path. Musicians themselves are looking to sustain their careers. <clears throat> it is getting increasingly difficult, excuse me, <clears throat> increasingly difficult to sustain their careers and find viable options for keeping on the path of creation. And so our job at Zoo Labs is really to explore that with them. What are viable solutions? Some people go down the music tech route um, and create products and services that they think musicians need. And these are musician-built hardware projects, software projects. And then some musicians are really trying to see, well, how do we get down into delivering the experience that people really want to connect with um, in music? And so that is really where the need comes in. Um, and we feel like we fill that need. 
Great. What I, what I like hearing about from all of you is um, you have this deep business sense, but also a deep knowledge of the communities that you're working with. And Emily, when I first met you, you were um, actually an activist, um, and you have a really interesting founding story that's related to that. Would you share it with us? Sure. So activist turned entrepreneur, both my co-founder and I used to chain ourselves to things and, and say no to a lot of things, and we wanted to say yes to something and give people who share our values something to say yes to. Uh, so my co-founder is Danny Kennedy, who's the co-founder of a solar company here in Oakland called Sungevity. Uh, they're the third largest solar company in the residential market as far as market share. Uh, and he's a former Greenpeace activist. I worked at a nonprofit here in Oakland called the Ella Baker Center with a guy named Van Jones, who was tapped to work for President Obama as an advisor. So worked on the policy and politics side of renewable energy for a while. Uh, but for anyone, sh show of hands of anyone who's worked in government or policy, anyone? Yeah, okay. Just so don't you know, want to admit it. You know, yeah, yeah, recovering. You know how, how, how arduous and just slow that process can be. And so as an entrepreneur at heart, I had a chance to work with a startup called Mosaic that started about four years ago, wanted to pilot their investment platform in Oakland to support uh, community centers who couldn't access financing to go solar on their own, uh, but Mosaic's crowdfunding platform could enable that and it would enable people who invested in it to make a return on their investment. So I partnered with them to help them install their first four systems in Oakland and was climbing on roofs and talking to potential customers and fell in love with the startup experience and knew that Mosaic was getting free office space from Sungevity's old office, which was in Berkeley before they had moved, or after they had moved to Jack London Square here in Oakland. And my business partner now, who at the time was on Mosaic's board, was providing them guidance and mentorship and I thought, Mosaic is growing and scaling so much faster than companies that are isolated and on their own because of that support, because of the office space, because of the mentorship, and what if we created a business that would crank out these solar solutions, and if there are a hundred or a thousand other mosaics around the country and around the world that if given the same resources, they're going to grow and scale much faster than if they were on their own working out of a cafe or working out of their home. So I pitched the idea to Danny and told him I would leave my job full time if he would leave his job part time to start this new business. And both of us have a vision for the solar industry that goes beyond any one company. And so we decided to, to give it a go. And that was two years ago. We started with two companies and had three months of runway. Uh, and two years later now, the 20 companies, the exit, um, the 300 entrepreneurs. And we're, we're just riding the solar wave. The solar industry now globally is a $250 billion economy. According to Mark Warner, the CEO of SunPower, one of the largest solar companies in the world, we're going to be a $5 trillion economy by 2020. So basically, if you're not yet involved in the solar industry, if you're an entrepreneur, I recommend you get involved. And if you're an investor, you have five years uh, to get in the game and to see those kind of returns. So um, our network of capital partners are, are extremely enthusiastic about the industry, uh, and, and I am too, and have just loved the path of doing this in Oakland, where because of our work, Oakland now has the highest concentration of solar entrepreneurs under one roof anywhere in the world, and it's two blocks from here. Uh, so it's exciting to, to see that kind of activity in Oakland. Thank you. Um, let's take our first question from the audience. Um, it's, is it hard to find vacancy in Oakland incubators today? And, and sort of related to that, do you, know, do you have vacancies in your accelerators and what are you looking for to fill them? We do. Um, we are probably 50% capacity. Uh, and uh, like I said, we're around the corner on top of the 19th Street BART station. Uh, we have a rooftop deck and a barbecue, and it's just a great place to work. So if you are a solar entrepreneur, if you know solar entrepreneurs, especially focused on software and finance, send them our way. We're definitely looking for people, too. We're looking for teams of two to four that have domain knowledge and that have real skills to address a real problem and have a real solution and, and want to be global. Yep. We are growing. Um, we are also looking for teams, <clears throat> music making, um, who are looking to grow their businesses. Um, and we're located in West Oakland. We're rapidly expanding and running our small business program about three times this year uh, for small businesses and social enterprises and our freelancer program six times uh, this year. We're looking for a commitment to creating a thriving business and desire to come in with a beginner's mindset and learn the ropes of running that business. Uh, we're based out of a co-working space, Impact Hub Oakland, just down the street, and we encourage all the entrepreneurs going through our program to be a part of a co-working space and offer our small business and enterprise uh, entrepreneurs uh, access to 10 hours per month at, that, at Impact Hub Oakland. Great. 
Um, we're at time, but nobody's forcing us off the stage, so I want to ask this <laughs> other question, which I think was a really good one. Um, it's about what accelerators charge to be part of the program, and rather than ask you whether or not you think that's ethical, how do you handle that with your accelerator participation and, um, and the value of it? So we don't charge for our program because we're looking to do the convertible note investment and build equity. So we, and, and the whole reason we even started our, VC, our, our micro VC fund was so that we can help companies scale a little higher uh, so that they're investable and so that they can bootstrap on, on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do not charge for our program. We are a nonprofit. So right now we are taking donor investment um, to build these teams and get them to the place that they want to do to be. Uh, we take an equity stake in their businesses as well as the songs that are created during the residency. Uh, we, <clears throat> we don't charge cash. We also take an equity stake um, and that's in part for the investment. We free rent. We connect them to capital partners, the pro bono business services. But yes, it's all equity. It's not cash. Mm -hmm. For our small business and enterprise program, we do charge a small cash fee per month, and we take a small equity stake in the business, and that equity stake goes into a pool that they, that all the entrepreneurs get to participate in, as well as our workers and, and our investors. In our freelancer program, we also charge a small cash fee, and if as there are profits at the end of the year, everyone gets a, a rebate back. Okay. All right. Well, great. Um, please join me in thanking our amazing group of panelists, and thanks for being our in Oakland today.